Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week once again. Last week was pretty interesting. I would say it was very choppy all the way until Wednesday. And then randomly out of nowhere, Fed Bostic, who's a non-voter by the way, came out and said that you could see a pause by the summer. Market pretty much grabbed for straws on that and ended up rallying. So rallied it from Thursday all the way up into Friday to close. And we ended up closing green. So a pretty good week for the stock market actually, despite the choppiness earlier in the week. Hopefully this week, we can you know maybe get some more clarity maybe jerome powell will throw us a few hints while he testifies to congress so let's go ahead and get into the economic calendar this week you can see on this website i only you can put like a one star two star three star for market impact i went ahead and did a two star just so it can filter out and show us the most important things on the economic calendar so for monday we have factory orders i wouldn't say this really has too much of an impact on the market so i wouldn't worry about it too much but we are very data sensitive right now, so anything's on the table. Tuesday, most important, we got Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking to Congress, so he'll be testifying to Congress, and people will be looking for hints, maybe talk of policy in that conversation. Wednesday, we have the balance of trade. We also have the Joe's job openings. Joe's job openings had a pretty good impact last time, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. We got Fed Chair Jerome Powell speaking again to Congress at 10 o'clock. Should be interesting. So we have two days of Jerome Powell, and you already know the whole market's going to be listening for that. Thursday, initial jobless claims. Also a Fed bar speech at 10. Friday, non-farm payroll is arguably the most important data set of the week. Also, we'll show the unemployment rate, and it has other factors into the labor market. So this should give us a little hint into the labor market. One thing that I'm personally looking for, I'm looking for the labor market to tighten up. That would be good for the market. A lot of people are going with the soft landing narrative, despite the labor market not coming down because they are showing that, you know, the economy is acting resilient. There hasn't really been too much of a constraint on the consumer as well as people are holding their jobs and finding new ones. And that's all despite rising interest rates, by the way. And this is why people grasp onto the soft landing narrative, which, I mean, could be delusional, but in history, usually we're going to see a fall in the labor market. We're going to see a lot of unemployment, and that's what's going to fight inflation, make people spend less, less inflationary. Let's go ahead and get into our first setup here. If you're new to these videos, we go over five individual tickers as well as the market indexes, uh, the volatility index, and also the U.S. dollar which also have an impact on the market. So usually you can find a pretty good day trade in these setups that I show you. And also you can find good swing trades as well because we are looking at the one day time frame. And usually we're only looking at the one day time frame. Sometimes you'll see stuff in the hourly too, but this week should be mostly the one day time frame on these specific setups. So our first setup here, we're looking at UPSD. You can see is a bullish falling wedge breaking out here. Ideally, you'd be looking for a move up to 2031. There's a small wick right here at 1938 too, it'd have to get over. If you go into the hourly, you can see why this 1938 level would be important to break over. But you do have a little free space right up to that on this wedge breakout. If it can get over that, it would probably back test and then try to get up into the 2031. This is looking pretty bullish for UPST. I'm a, I'm a little skeptical though, just because it did close up 6.5%. So this is already way up, but I mean, it doesn't look too overextended yet. UPSD is a very volatile name. So this thing does have huge moves. But otherwise you can see it had a nice period of consolidation, finally breaking out, but you do have those little wick areas and resistance to worry about. So that's just something to keep an eye on. But overall, this does look bullish. It is back above the 50 period moving average. That could help. You got the KDJ crossing upside. So that's also bullish. Last week, I didn't have too many bullish setup. You might remember Exily. Exily worked out pretty good right off support. What else did we have? We had a uh, LUV calls as well that bounced off the trend line. It ended up holding pretty good, but I wouldn't say it had like the greatest week or anything. It closed higher than we opened Monday, but it wasn't like a huge gain or anything, but it did hold the overall trend line. So this week we have a little bit more bullish setups just because that's what the technicals are showing. And we also have, you know, one or two potential put setups, but we'll go ahead and get into our next one here. So next we're looking at IWM here. And I really like this bullish breakout here. And the reason for that is because it's reclaiming this 189.24. You got the KDJ crossing upside, holding overall demand zone. You got a nice bounce off the 50 EMA. 
and you're also breaking out. Now I do a price target be this wick high right here at 194.87 and that runs directly into the main supply zone at the top here which is a rally base drop supply zone. So IWM looks good here. This is actually a tradable setup this week. Usually we just add it to our index analysis but it actually made it into my list this week because this does look pretty good for upside. So we're looking at calls in this and also looking at calls in UPST by the way. So these are two bullish setups if you didn't already understand. So look for that 194.87 potentially for IWM. This is a pretty big breakout candle. It could have, you know, maybe a little period of consolidation first before going higher, or it could even, you know, pull back and have a back test. But overall, I feel like this 194.87 will hit eventually. So yeah, it looks pretty good here. This will be a tradable setup this week. This is not just analysis for the indexes. This actually looks pretty good. So definitely going to be keeping this one on watch, looking at calls on this one. You can see, I mean, prior it did have that little downside, but that's because it broke this uptrend line. But now that it's formed a base and kind of had a little consolidation period and also have two support areas holding the 50 EMA, you got demand zone low holding, you got a reclaim over 189.24, you got a breakout. That's why this is able to look like it's going to get momentum. So that's IWM looking at calls. Next, we're going into TSM. So this is a trend line play specifically. This had a pretty nice bounce here you can see three tests on the 50 ema so you got you know bottom 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 and it's overall holding the structure and also bouncing up the trend line this would be a test one test two this would be a test three or four off the trend line ideally you're going to see a move up to this supply zone it's probably about as high as i could put you for now it's about 9240s or so if we can get the exact here it'd be 9233 for the supply zone so this looks good for upside but for every trend line play, especially in volatility this year, I do set an alert. So we'll right click, add alert, and we'll just put breakdown just in case it does want to break the trend line and we'll have to switch. You know what I mean? But right now this is holding a bullish structure. So calls are the focus. You're going to be looking for upside here. And then you do have, you know, the alert set just in case. I mean, if you did take this and your, you know, your trend line starts breaking and the 50 EMA breaks, that would be your stop loss. But also that would give you a signal to go ahead and jump into puts, assuming that the daily candle close closes under the trend line. But otherwise, you got the KDJ crossed it up. You got uptrend line holding, 50 EMA holding. This looks like a pretty good curl up that would head up into supply. So definitely gonna be looking at calls in this. It looks like China had a pretty good week as well. The other day, the Hong Kong index just had a crazy balance. I think it was up like 4% or something. So that maybe gave it a little gas the last few days as well as U.S. equities pumping as well from Fed Bostic talking about pausing. So that's for TSM. Like I said, looking at calls, nice little structure here, nice little trend line. But then you do have that insurance for the trend line alert just in case it breaks and then you can switch your bias. Next, we're going to LLY. So this is a longer term trend line play. This is a little bit different than TSM, even though it's an uptrend line. This is a longer term trend line. So this is all the way from 2020. This is also a test three uptrend line. So ideally you'd be looking for a bounce here. You can see a nice bottom wick slash shadow at the bottom of this weekly candle. If you go to the daily, you can see the daily close above. So it's still holding. Ideally you could see a move up to the supply right here, about 328. That's probably about as high as I could put you, or you know, that would put you, you know, right near the daily 200 SMA. You can also see it reclaiming this 317 wick low specifically right here and put a little smiley face next to it you can see that 317 right there you can see it reclaiming above that could take it higher as well as it's holding the uptrend line all the way from 2020 so this is a weekly time frame setup looks really nice i did go ahead and set that alert at the trend line the same way i showed you on tsm you just right click you add alert and you wait for it to break if you if you wanted to put setup on this but honestly this is still holding the structure so Ideally, you'd be looking for calls as long as it's holding up Monday, Tuesday. It's holding the overall structure, not, you know, selling off too much. It's not crossing back below the trend line. You are still in play here. But since we are in volatility, you do want that insurance and you want to be able to switch just in case because we switch so fast sometimes. And that's why you set the alert. If you're playing off a trend line and directly off it, you do want that insurance and you, you know, you want safety just in case. And that's where your risk tolerance comes into play. That's where risk management comes into play. And you go ahead and set that alert you wait for it to break and then you know you could stop out or you know you can switch the puts do whatever you want and that's the good thing about trend lines is that, you know they're they're pretty bilateral so you know you can play them either way but you do have to wait for that confirmation first but i, I really like trend lines because i mean they they provide opportunities in both directions but right now you can see i mean it's holding the structure same thing as like tsm tsm was holding the structure this is still holding structure so ideally you'd be looking for that upside since it is holding so that's lly looking at calls next we're going into pan w so i really like this one for a put trade specifically but one thing i am going to be looking for i'm looking for that daily candle close i want to see a bearish daily candle close 
it's indicating that it's reacting to 192, 93 uh, resistance first. But you can see we're pulling up into this massive supply zone all the way from 2020, acted as a resistance here, kind of had a small resistance here in top wick, but now it's, you know, retesting. But you can see the resistance here at 192, 93. You can see it's a nice little top area. We are now testing that directly. So ideally, we want to see that daily candle and start to curl down from here. But since we are kind of looking bullish on the indexes a little bit, maybe, you know, just go ahead and wait for that daily candle close for sure. Or, you know, if you're day trading, just make sure you see that cash open selling and something that's going to, you know, validate your thesis. Maybe even use Camarilla pivots or something. Go watch my other video on the strategy. It will give you a nice entry on puts. You could either, you know, short at R3 when it pops or, you know, you can go short below S4 intraday. So make sure to go check that out if you want a good day trading strategy and also a good area for entry points so that's for pan w this does look really good for a counter trend reversal on puts you got massive resistance you got big old supply looks really good you also have a pretty big gap below i feel like this will fill eventually but you don't want to put a time horizon on it because you know the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent so i'm sure you heard that one before so yeah like i said you know if you want to be safe just wait for that daily candle close if you get a daily candle close looking bearish you know, they, they'll give you your entry and it'll look pretty, look pretty good for a swing trade. Otherwise, if you're day trading, you know, just use the camera little pivots, wait for something to break in support, maybe wait for Friday's low to get taken out and that will give you a good entry for puts. So that's our five setups. Next, we're gonna be going into the indexes. You can see IWM already made it into our list. So we're just gonna be going over SPY and QQQ in terms of equities. The next, we're going into the SPY, really big fake out for the bears. You can see it broke the trend line, but also we were focused on that 200 SMA last week. It did hold that as support, even made a little double bottom and then eventually reclaimed the trend line. So now we're looking a little bit more bullish. Maximum PT I got for SPY, I got us up to supply at 406, which is pretty, I mean, pretty close by. And then also have us going up to the trend line maximum where you can see resistance about there. But overall, this does look bullish just because it reclaimed the trend line. It's holding 200 SMA support. I am in some April puts here just because the economic data is looking, been pretty, been looking pretty mug and looks like inflation could stick. So I took a small bet on puts. I got him probably about down here. So I did get faked out on this trend line, but we got plenty of time on it. We got April expiration. So we'll see how that turns out. But right now, SPY looking pretty bullish after these two closes. Also reclaiming the trend line. You got KDJ crossing up. You got 200 SMA support. You got it reclaiming the 50. So you got a couple of things going for you right here, but keep in mind it is mid range. So this is not really giving you like the greatest entry or anything, but overall the structure is still looking pretty bullish. It really sucks too, because this uh, this uptrend line really could have been, this uptrend line breaking really could have been a nice downside play, assuming we got under the, the daily 200 SMA. Probably gonna took us down to this weekly demand at 383. But overall, I am looking for this 383 demand to get tested eventually. We'll just have to see how it goes. Right now, since we're so data dependent, you know, the Fed is also data dependent, it really makes anything a coin toss. You know, nobody's safe right now. So you don't want to get overconfident on anything right now. You know, be a skeptic in everything you enter. Realize, you know, the market can go against you, but that doesn't mean you have to trade scared or anything. You know, maybe just go smaller, try to, you know, try to bring it down a notch and, you know, realize that we're in different market market conditions now. We're not in free money, you know, hot money market anymore. We're now in rising interest rates, inflationary environment, all that. So you just got to be careful. But yeah, SPY looking pretty bullish here. It would need to get back under the trend line, obviously, to be bearish. You can see some resistance at 406 supply, like I said, and also resistance at this little uptrend or uh, downtrend line. So that's where the SPY looking decent. Next, we're going into QQQ. So last week, the focus on QQQ was this demand zone, and you can see why. And also, we had the 50 and 200 uh, had a major confluence right here. And you can see why it acted as support. I mean, it didn't break either. It closed below this one day on Thursday, but it did reclaim above. So we never got an official close below the 200. And that's why I'm guessing it did go higher. But you can see now reclaiming 296.88, which comes from this previous resistance. It also acted as support right here. Acted as a slight resistance here, but now reclaiming back above. You can see it has a little supply zone right here. So likewise with SPY, QQQ, I got you up to supply in this downtrend line maximum. That's about as high as I could put you. And that's just because you never know how it's going to react once it gets to the line so we just have to go off the technicals but overall it did hold this low so looking bullish similarly but honestly the iwm looks the best compared to spy and qqq iwm looks great 
because it has that fresh breakout. You have, you know, resisted slightly above. It's not like a super hard rejection area or anything. And, it, you know, it could see some room upside. So it looks way better than the Spy and QQQ, to be honest. Spy and QQQ is right now is just kind of mid range. If you entered right here, you're not getting the best entry. It only have a couple points up to the downtrend line. And same with Spy, if you entered up. You know, it looks the same pretty much. You only have a couple points of the supply and the downtrend line. But yeah, I mean, kind of ugly, right? I mean, there's really no pattern here or anything. Same with SPY. Uh, it did have that uptrend line breaking. That was looking good, but now it's invalid. So kind of just have to wait for something else to form on this. Maybe once it gets up to the trend line, you could play puts off that and make a nice, you know, day trade if it had a quick rejection. But otherwise, I mean, maybe just set an alert at the uptrend line, wait for it to get up there. Once it gets up there, you know, you could take some puts at the downtrend line if you get the right rejection at the area. So maybe just wait on the QQQ. This could be setting up for something good if it gets up into the trend line. VIX. I hate this thing so much. This thing is just, I mean, it's just all over the place. You can see it's been stuck in a range. We broke out of that. I don't know if you remember the last few videos. We were focused on that, you know, wedge breakout. It broke out for a couple days. Even made it all the way up to 2363. So I had a nice little spike along with going up with bond yields. So we did have a little bit of volatility. And also the you know the spy is breaking the trend line so we had a bunch of you know we had a bunch of good signals for you know the stocks to go lower but overall they just didn't we even had a higher dollar move as well and that that didn't do it for it we still bounced so for the vix this week you can see it's getting up to the 1811 support bounced from here a couple times so i mean it could you know start cur curling up here if it's holds you know you're gonna get back up to the 20s easily if it gets under this 1811 that takes you down to 1706 which is the lowest point and also the most recent lowest point and that's pretty much your levels i mean you can see it's back under the 50 ema the 2022 to 2023 average close did drop from 20 what was that 25 uh 2497 down to 2489 so and i got that from my data if you go to my data these are the last five closes from the week you can see you got your average right over here, show value 24.89. And this is the average close from 2022 all the way to current. And the reason why we track this is because that's when volatility started picking up a lot more. That's when the Fed started raising rates. So it's pretty important to pay attention to volatility in most recent conditions. But you can see it's got a 50 EMA, just like, you know, we track on our trading view here. It, we almost got to the whole medium target, but it, we just quite didn't quite make it. So, but now, I mean, now that we're lower, I feel like this will have another shot back up to the average eventually, but it's gonna need some time maybe to bounce around here make a base off the 18s let algorithms and institutions go ahead and start messing with the spx options the spx options is then going to start messing with the vix and if you didn't know the vix is based purely off supply and demand of spx options 30 days out so 30 days expiration on spx is what affects this but yeah like i said under 1811 that's going to take you to 1706 that'd be bullish i'd really like to see it get under there that'd be a nice signal for calls if it did get back above and hold this pretty well it would probably get back above 20 and that's where you know the major psychological level has always been just make sure to watch if it gets back over 20 especially if it starts picking up over 20 that's a good indication that something might be picking back up on the short term and you can see once it got over 20 here nice shoot up you got over 20 here had a nice shoot up over 20 here got a nice shoot up etc so you can see why 20 is a psychological level it always has been but otherwise i mean this is just showing that options are getting very cheap right now this is this is pretty low like for real guys this is this is about as low as the vix you know has been in a long time well it feels like forever but it's just crazy so puts are pretty cheap right now implied volatility overall 30 days out is pretty cheap right now which kind of scares me to be honest because once it gets down here it really does start to kind of start picking up and i feel like this is when people start getting skeptical that you know people start thinking oh volatility is coming down it's over you know bull market back fed's gonna pivot blah 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 and then something comes out of the woodwork and we just start spiking back up whether it's you know bond yields whether it's the dollar whether it's some you know bs wall street media coming out with some narrative to make it fit theirs i mean it's just crazy so markets are crazy right now but especially keep an eye on this 1811 like i said wait for it to get back over 20 if you want to be overly bearish wait for it to get in our 1811 to be bullish all right and next we're going into the dxy so we're looking at the four hour this week just because it's kind of been a little bit choppy this is pretty much where we opened on monday and we just kind of stayed in this range with some notable price points i'm watching we really need the dollar to get back under this right here and that also pans out to 10409 so your zone is 10409 to 10396 that's pretty much going to act as support it will until proven otherwise if it does get below that i 
feel like that'd be really bullish for stocks. So right now, holding overall structure, you do have two tests on a downtrend line. This is unconfirmed. If it gets up to test three, that will form the downtrend. But otherwise, still holding structure. There's really nothing crazy here. Just watch that 104.09, 103.96. Really bullish signal if it can get under that. And you know, you can probably start looking at calls in the market, to be honest, once it gets under that. That would be a really good signal as well as if the vix got under that 1811 that would be really good as well for the short term so that's your levels this week pretty short for the dollar you can see i mean it's got a resistance point here it's got a resistance point here it got 10466 and then 10535 if it gets back over that 10466 which is, comes from this it could head back up to the downtrend line so that's another area of focus Otherwise, it looks like it could fall down to the support. That'd be bullish for stocks and it pretty much overall fits with the SPY reclaiming its trend line and, you know, having that room up the supply in the downtrend line. So that's for the dollar, guys. Really nothing fun this week. We've already been over the COVID 2020 peak. We also pretty much topped out, or, you know, around the resistance point that we were looking at last week. It didn't quite make it all the way there, but, you know, it is close enough to start finding resistance. And now I'm just kind of staying in this range. So, you know, like I said, just that 104.09 to 103.96, if it gets under that, start looking for a bullish market. If it reclaims that 104.66, you know, just be cautious because it could run up to that downtrend line. But that's the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope the setups work well this week. I feel like last week they weren't like crazy good or anything, but you know, there was a couple, couple gems that worked out pretty good. There was like Microsoft puts and Exit calls, LUV worked out pretty good. I personally didn't have that great of a week on the stock market. I feel like, you know, it could get better this week. Hopefully we'll get some volatility and hopefully we'll make some money. I know some people, you know, they did pretty well, but me personally, I feel like it, it could have been better for me personally. And you know, that's just, that's gonna happen in the business. So hopefully all these setups work out well. Hopefully we have a good trading week. I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our X-Trays YouTube channel. And I'm out.